Oh, hi. Uh, I'm just sitting out here in the rain and the snow and uh, thinking about stuff, and I got a couple questions for you guys. Do you like hoppy beers? Uh, that's one question. Second question, uh, do you like the uh, late addition method with uh, extract brewing? Now, that method was actually kind of invented after I had stopped doing extract, but um, the reason you do it is you get a uh, lower density of wort, so you get a better hop utilization, and also you maybe get a lighter colored wort or beer in the end. And I've been thinking about making um, a hoppy uh, IPA, in this case uh, IPL, and uh, wondering if I could somehow use that uh, thought process of the late addition in all grain brewing. So I thought about it and I came up with an idea that I'm going to try today, an experiment. For now I'm calling it the all grain late addition method. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you'll see what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try to do, and uh, eventually we'll taste the beer, see if it turns out. And if you want to try it, uh, you know, I'd be happy to hear uh, what you get for your results. I'm not really doing a control, so I'm not doing the same beer a different way. But, you know, I've brewed a lot of beers, and um, hopefully with my educated guesses, it'll all come out in the end. So uh, come along for the ride, and stay dry, my friends. Cheers. I will post this recipe so you can um, get a better look at it. Um, as you can see, I was going to have Amarillo on here, but they didn't have any. Um, maybe it's, you know, the most recent crop isn't in. So I substituted this guy for Amarillo, which I think is fair enough. But, as I look at it, it's an all sea hop beer now. Uh, anyway, so yeah, check the brew log link for the details. And so I don't have to show it to you later. We'll do a quick... Look, see at the uh, yeast. Uh, this is some washed yeast, uh, Bavarian lager. I think uh, maybe 21, 24. That I made a starter um, one and a half days ago, and obviously it's spinning, so I'll just be dumping that whole thing in. I have an early morning brew, buddy. You want to say hello? is done so now we're gonna start the collection gonna collect the first bits the first bit in the uh, two core pitcher here this is the Vorloff um, letting the work run clear now with this uh, experiment that I'm doing you're gonna want to over collect on your amount of wort because I'm gonna be boiling these two pots on the stove in addition to boiling this uh, whole thing once I collect my wort. So what that's going to mean is I'm going to be reducing my volume and condensing the gravity by a higher amount than usual. So what that means is I'm going to have to start with more wort. Um, so what I did is I added a little bit more um, wort, no, a little more water to my uh, mash out addition to start with. I suppose you could also just um, mash at a uh, higher, uh, mash with uh, more water to begin with. And you can also then add more water on your um, sparge. So this is running clear now. So here comes the experimental part. I'm just, this is all arbitrary. I've never done this. Um, this is related to the way that I brew high gravity beers. I did a video on that, but it's also a little different, different goal in mind. So, what I think I'm going to do today is I'm going to do six quarts between these two pots. Um, that will be a gallon and a half, and then I'm going to boil this separately, then I'm going to collect the rest of my wort, maybe six gallons or so uh, in here and then this is what I'll be boiling so here is the first two quarts so this is the highest gravity runnings that I can get um, these are the very first runnings right so that's why I'm calling it uh, 
a late addition method because I'm going to withhold all of the sugar um, all of the extract from the grain that's going to be in these and I'm going to withhold it from having it in the whole volume that I'm boiling the hops in um, so what I'm doing is it'll be a lower density wort in here than it would be if I had all of this um, high sugar content wort in there so there's two here's four I usually don't stop it like this obviously but Ooh, that's a nice goldenish tin, tinge of red and orange color work for a IPA. So, yeah, I don't know. You could do whatever you want. You could just do one gallon. You could do one pot. Um, if you do two, you're going to reduce the volume by a greater amount because you're going to have a um, more surface area, so more... Um, water can be evaporating off as you're boiling it. Evaporating? Is that the right word? You know what I mean. So, now I've got my six quarts here. I'll do another quart in this pot. Oh man, that is a nice color. And another quart here. Uh, let's do a quick gravity check on these. To see what we got here. If it'll give me a nice reading. So this is coming in at 15 bricks. So this wort right here is about 1060 already. Um, and then as it, I think if I remember, I'll take a reading after it's been boiling. It'll be interesting to see what it, um, you know, raises up to. Okay, now to get this stuff boiling. I ended up collecting uh, four and a half gallons from the first running, so maybe a little bit more than I planned on, but um, that's okay. So what I did is I'm only adding about two and a half gallons right now for the sparge, um, aiming for around seven gallons. It might go a little bit over seven gallons, but I was thinking uh, seven and a half gallons might be... Uh, too much. This might be too much um, volume to boil down to about five. So I have those two pots up on the stove. I'll get a shot of that in a bit. Um, but now we're doing the sparge. So what I end up in this pot here with should be five and a half to six gallons, which is gallons, um, which is still approximately. Um, as much volume as you would have if you're just doing a normal batch, but in this case I'm brew I'm boiling additional wort upstairs. So the point is, again, the gravity of this wort is going to be less than if we were just doing, you know, a higher concentrated amount of uh, sugar into this uh, pot and boiling it all at once. The idea is that I might get a little bit higher hop extraction, hop utilization with your lower gravity wort. And that is why people do, that's one reason why people do the late extract addition with uh, extract brewing. So, let me see if we can get a second runnings here. Reading. And then I'll find out what my total volume of pre-boil um, collection is. Uh, is okay so this says about seven so I'm still getting if multiply that by four it's 28 I'm still getting 1028 you know word out of here so by no means is it um, you know running down to the end of its um, sugar content right now but I'll let this collect and then we'll see what we have for the total pre boil volume got the trusty explode in action. Uh, another trick I do is I use this fan. I think it helps reduce the volume um, even more than without it because as you can see the steam is blowing. It's getting blown off the top of the surface and um, I think it just helps um, you know get get this um, volume reduced even more more evaporation but also it just helps it get it out of my tuck under garage here 
so here's the update. I did end up collecting um, seven and a half gallons after all. So what I decided to do was I took a little bit more wort, dumped it into my two pots up on the stove so they have a little bit more in them and I'm going to do a 15 minute boil before I add the first hop addition. That's just purely to reduce the volume. It's a little bit of guesswork but I've done this kind of stuff in the past and hopefully I'll end up with around five gallons plus or minus. So right now I'm going to be boiling this for 15 minutes. I've got the things boiling up on the stove. I can do a quick shot of that um, and then I'll start adding the hops. All right, just to give you a visual uh, idea of what's going on here, here are these two pots. Um, they're both boiling. And, um, you know, so all this surface area that I have going on here is just more space for the uh, water to be evaporated off, boiled off, and uh, hopefully we will end up with a good amount of volume. This is also a way to concentrate the sugars. So this is how I'll do uh, high gravity all grain brewing too. I'll kind of do this step. And uh, hopefully I'll remember to take a gravity reading of these. Maybe I'll just combine them and take one gravity reading. And it should be pretty high after it started at 1060 and then got boiled for uh, 75 minutes. So we'll see. Still boiling. Still boiling. All right, I'm not gonna show you all of the hop additions because if you are brewing all grain and if you are brewing craziness like this, you at least know how to add hops. However, it is time for a 15 minute. I got my little scale here. 14 grams of love. There we go. Just for fun, I'll throw in the winter scene here. We've got piles and piles of snow. It's kind of rainy though today. We're starting to get to the end of winter. And uh, it's going in the old compost pile. And uh, got drippings. The two pots in the kitchen have been boiling for an hour 15 minutes. Uh, time to add them. Um, back in. Now unfortunately I didn't use the pot that has the volume measurements on it so I don't know what it reduced down to. But there's really not more than like a gallon in here and I started with like two plus gallons. So this will be kind of fun. Hopefully this will work out. So I've combined the two pots into one here so the gravity has just been combined uh, and mixed. And it started at 1060 so, let me see here. What? It's off the charts? Uh, it, <laughs> it might be over, uh, 35 bricks? I don't know. Let's see. Well, I guess maybe I can't even see. It's at the very top of the scale, which I don't know if that just means it's off. Otherwise, it's 32, 33 bricks, which is times four is, you know, 11, 20 or something. It's very high, very high gravity, uh, which is what we wanted, and not a lot of volume. So this is gonna be the late edition, um, similar to when you were doing your extract late edition. So let's get it dumped in. All right, so as you can see in this four gallon pot, it's way, way down here. Um, it's really about like this high, I mean, there's probably a gallon and a half in there. I don't know if I can get this on film. I haven't really planned this out. Uh, yeah, I guess you can see it a little bit anyway. So I've got four minutes left in the boil. But this has been boiling the whole time, so obviously it's well sanitized. So there goes the late addition. Gravity boost to this beer. So. Looking at the kettle, I should hopefully be coming in around uh, five gallons when it's all said and done, and I'll be interested to see what the gravity is, and I'll kind of wrap it up with those details, and that'll be about it for today. Just a quick shot of my uh, ice bath. Literally, ice bath, snow, uh, snow, uh, all around. 
it is cold water. So I don't think I'll need to chill it all that long because of all this really super cold water all around it, which is great in the winter. I got the wort down to 60 degrees um, in about 12 minutes. And you can see I'm at about 4.8 gallons, uh, which is not too bad. Um, remember, I started with 7.5 gallons. So with boiling an extra 15 minutes before adding the hops, then doing an hour boil, and with boiling the two pots on the stove, I've reduced that quite a bit. Um, and the gravity is, it's going to be hard for you to see, but um, it's right about 1070. So for 1070, for, um, for 13 and a half pounds of grain, for my system is quite, well, quite good. Um, but that also includes all that, uh, you know, extra boiling like I talked about. So I got one liter of yeast starter to pitch which is going to bring it right up to about five gallons. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm not going to add any more water. You know, you're talking about a couple pints uh, extra. And I'll just go with the gravity that I have. I'll top it off with the yeast starter. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm using a lager um, yeast strain this time. So I'm making a, like an India Pale Lager, I guess, which is something that some breweries do. but. Uh, Otherwise, it's a full-on IPA recipe, grain bill and hop bill, with the lager yeast. So I probably won't post this video until the whole thing is done and we can taste it, and then we'll maybe guess and see if the um, this late addition method made it any more bitter. It definitely helped with the extract, uh, the efficiency. So thanks for watching. Catch you later. Hey everybody, let's uh, taste this stuff. I've held off on the video until I could do a tasting. I don't know about where you live, but we have had some crazy weather. And uh, I think I have a shot of me in the beginning of this video sitting in a s snowy storm. Uh, that was March. It's now late April. It's been a month and a half. This beer is on tap. It looks beautiful. Um, and I should do a, a beauty shot and insert it here. Maybe I'll do that after. And here it is, all of its Pilsner glass glory. I don't know how the focus is, but uh, yeah, nice lacing, nice hop, resins, good stuff. Okay, so you got to just see the beer. Um, anyway, did the experiment work? Great question. I wish I could answer it. The best way to answer it would be if I brewed this same beer again, uh, without doing the uh, late addition method and just kind of collected a larger volume and boiled it all at once Which I obviously have not done in this case. So um, I've been drinking this beer a little bit It is pretty bitter. I didn't use a ton of bittering hops if you look at the recipe So I I kind of think that maybe it is a little bit more bitter uh, Than it would have been It has a fairly um, pronounced, you know, kind of bracing bitterness, but it has a lot of malt character too. Now, another thing about this beer, being a lager yeast, um, it lets the malt character come through a little bit better than maybe some ale yeast, so uh, that's also kind of working against me in this experiment to just see how bitter it could be. We got kids on the loose, um, but it tastes great. It's a really good recipe. It'd be kind of fun to try a Russian River blind pig, uh, the ale, and see how it would compare to this. Um, it's not easily accessible to me, so I have had it a couple times. But anyway, I think this is a great way to make a hoppy beer. I'm very interested for your thoughts, and if you want to give it a try with any recipe, obviously you don't have to do this recipe, um, let me know what you think. You know, it might be a good thing to do if you have made a certain IPA several times to try this kind of a thing uh, with a little different technique and see if you notice any difference. So anyway, uh, yeah, let me know what you think and uh, have a good summer everyone since it's already arrived. Cheers.